Hello and welcome to Mrs. Law's class. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at similar figures and scale factor. So similar figures are shapes, they can be either two-dimensional or three-dimensional, that look alike either larger or smaller, but not necessarily the same size. Now two figures are similar if the corresponding angles are the same, and the corresponding sides are proportional. And I'll show you what this means in a little bit. So to show similarity between figures, we use the symbol that is like the squiggle here. And so for example, we can say that triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF. And you can see the similar symbol in between these two triangles. So let's take a look at what scale factor is now. Now you might have heard the word scale being used in maps, models, and diagrams to show the relationship between the image length and the length in real life. So the scale factor is the number that is used as a multiplier to calculate the image size. So to find the scale factor, you're going to need the image length and the object length to be in the same units. So the formula for scale factor is equal to the image length divided by the object length. So remember that the image value is always in the numerator and the object length is always in the denominator. Next, a scale enlargement is used to show small things that are not practical to draw in actual size because they are too small. So the image will end up being larger than the object. So the scale factor is going to be greater than 1. So for example, if we have a scale factor of, let's say, 5, that means that the image is 5 times bigger than the original object. Now you might also have a scale reduction. And this is often used to illustrate large things that are not practical to draw an actual size because they are too big this time. So the image is now going to be smaller than the object. So this time the scale factor is going to be between 0 and 1. Let's take a look at some examples of how to find the scale factor. So here's a table where we have the object length and the image length, or maybe even the scale factor. So remember to find the scale factor, we take the image length and we divide by the object length. Now in this first one here, we have 0 0.5 centimeters, but the image is actually one meter. So we need to convert the one meter to be 100 centimeters. All right, so now that we've done that, we're going to take our image length of 100, and we're going to divide that by 0 0.5. So remember that dividing by 0 0.5 is the same thing as dividing by a half, which is actually timesing by 2. So 100 divided by 0 0.5 is actually 200. So the scale factor is 200. So knowing that the scale factor is 200, that's a number much bigger than 1. So that means it's going to be 200 times, sorry, the image will be 200 times the object, which means that we have an enlargement. All right, in the next one, we have 36 centimeters and 720 millimeters. So again, we want to change these to be the same units. So let's change our centimeters. We're going to times that by 10. That will be 360 millimeters. So now we have 360 divided by 720. We can cross off our zeros. And this actually reduces nicely to a half. So you can put a half as your scale factor, or you can also put 0 0.5. So if the scale factor is half or 0 0.5, think of it as 
the image is half the size of the object, which therefore means that we have a reduction. All right, in the final one here, we can see that we already have a scale factor of 0 0.2. So that means the image is smaller. So we know this is going to be a reduction. So using our formula, we know that the image length, which we don't know, so we're going to call it x, divided by the object length, 30, is going to give us a scale factor of 0 0.2. So if I multiply both sides, by 30, the 30s will cross off. We're going to have x is equal to 0 0.2 times 30, which equals to 6. Now, because I noticed that 30 is in millimeters, 6 must also be in millimeters. Next, let's take a look at some applications of scale factor. So here we have a cylinder, and it is to be enlarged by a scale factor of 5 over 2. So what will be the new dimensions? So hint um, is you can write this scale as a decimal, or actually you can also even write it in fraction. I'll show you how to do that. So finding the dimensions, we know that the diameter of this cylinder is three centimeters. And we can really see that the height is seven centimeters. So it's gonna be enlarged by a factor of five over two. So all we have to do is take our original dimensions and multiply it by five over two, and that will give us our new dimensions. So three times five is going to be 15. And then don't forget that the three is actually over one. So we have 1 times 2, which is 2. And if we go 15 divided by 2, we can see that's going to be 7.5 centimeters. Okay, now for the height. So if you like, if you don't want to use fractions, you can also think of this as 7 times 2.5. Now some of you might then have to do some law multiplication. So 2.5 times 7. So we carry the 3, bring down the 5. 7 times 2 is 14, plus 3 is going to be 17. The decimal is over here, which means that we move it over one place to the left, one place to the left, which means that 7 times 2.5 is 17.5 centimeters. Now, I actually probably find it, I find it personally easier to use the fraction in this case because I can easily times 3 by 5 to get 15, and then I can divide by 2 easily as well. So that gives us 7 and a half. If you want to do this with fractions, this would have been 7 times 5 over 2, which equals 35 over 2, and then you just have to take 35 divided by 2, and that will give you also 17.5 centimeters. Let's take a look at another example. So here we have a picture of H1N1 virus. So the cell usually is 80 to 120 nanometers in diameter in real life. So the question is, what scale factor could have been used to draw this diagram? Now, this diagram on my computer screen is enlarged. So if you go and use your ruler to measure um, your virus on your piece of paper, you will find that the measurement is 1.8 centimeters. So measured is 1.8 centimeters, okay, which is equal to, and we know that centimeters, two meters, we need to move it two decimal places. So it'd be 0 0.018 meters. Now we have a conversion here where it tells us that one nanometers is 1 times 10 to the negative 9 meters. So what we can do is we can go 0 0.018 meters, because that is our image. And we're going to divide it by the object. And the real object is 80 to 120 nanometers. So if we take the lower limit, we can say that this is going to be 80 and then times 10 to the negative 9. And this will also be 
in meters because we've converted the nanometers to meters by timesing it by 10 to the negative 9. So here you might want to use a calculator and you type this out. 0.018 divided by 80 um, in the brackets in the bottom, 80 times 10 to the negative 9. And you're going to get 225,000 as your scale factor. So it is a huge increase compared to what it is in real life. I'm going to show you another way to find the scale factor. And this time, we're going to use nanometers instead of meters. So we measured um, the virus on our paper to be 1.8 centimeters, which converts to 0 0.018 meters. So we're going to use our scale factor this time to convert the meters to nanometers. So this will be times 10 to the negative 9. So our image will then be, we're going to move this over 9 places. So it'll be 1, 2, 3. So it'll be 18. So 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So this will actually be 18,000 nanometers. And then we divide by our real life object size, which is 80 nanometers. So we can cross off the zero, but then you'll have to do long division, or you can again, you can use your calculator to take the numerator divided by the denominator, and you're going to get 225,000 again. Now, if you want to find the upper limit for 120 nanometers, we can do the same thing. Oops. And we can take 100, sorry, not 100, 18 million. And that will be divided by, this time, 120. And both of them will be in nanometers. Dividing this, we get 150,000. So your scale factor that could have been used would be 150,000 to 225,000, um, given that the virus is 80 to 120 nanometers. And these two are our scale factors.